Hi, I'm Chris Bailey, and today on the CG Cookie tutorial, we're gonna be making a bike tire using modifiers. Let's get started. This tutorial is inspired by the brand new course on cgcookie.com called Tread. In this course, Chubb takes us through some really awesome procedural techniques for how to model high detail tire. And then he goes through step-by-step -step all the processes you need to unwrap texture in Substance Painter and to get this as a game asset into Unreal Engine 5. Okay, so let's get started. I'm gonna hit A to select Select all and X to delete. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to go Shift A, Mesh, and Plane. We're going to create a simple plane. I'm going to go into edit mode and hit A to select all and R to rotate and X to lock my rotation on the X. And then I'm going to type 90 just to flip this thing up on the 90 degree axis. Now this is going to become the tread of our tire. Now what I want to do is I'm going to squash this down a little bit. And what we're doing is we're basically creating a cross section of the tread that we're gonna then array out in a big circle. And we're gonna use that to model out the shape of the tire. We're gonna do this as a pretty simple tire. So what we're gonna do is hit A to select all and then S to scale and Z. And we're going to bring this down on the Z a little bit like that. Then I'm gonna hit Control R to create a loop cut. I'm gonna click and then hit escape to get out of loop cut mode. This is just gonna put a cut right down the middle there. Now we're just gonna do a few of these. So I'm gonna do a control R and make another one here. I'm gonna come up here and switch to edge mode, grab this edge here and hit E and X, and just bring this out and then maybe E and Y and bring it back. Okay, so this is going to form the basis for our tire. Now to save time, I don't want to have to model the same thing on both sides. So I'm going to select this edge right here and this edge and this edge and hit X, delete edges. Then I'm going to come over to the modifiers tab. Now that's the wrench icon over in the properties panel. So I'm going to click on that and on add modifier, I'm going to click and type mirror. There we go. Now we've got a mirror along the X. Now if you've modeled yours in a different axis, you might need to change which one it is, but by default, X is what is selected. I'm going to turn clipping on. That will make sure that we don't have any overlap just in case our vertices uh, move off of the plane right here in the middle. And then what we're going to do is we're going to add in the next stage. We're going to add an array modifier. So I'm going to grab an array. Now by default, the array modifier is set to a fixed count of two and relative offset of one. And what relative offset is basically is it's going to be offset relative to the other, the other parts of the mesh. So if I go into edit mode here and like grab this edge and move it, you can see that it's going to continue to offset relative to the shape of my total mesh. If I was to turn this off and switch this to constant offset, constant offset is going to be a constant set value. And you can see the whole thing isn't moving off just when I move that around. So I'm gonna set this to relative offset and I'm gonna make my X factor zero because I'm gonna be moving up and down on the Z. So I'm gonna go one for the Z and there you go. You can see we're moving up one unit. So it's duplicating it once. And if I was to increase this count, it's gonna go more and more. Now, so I can continue to see my mesh and think about how things are coming together. I'm gonna to go up to this tab, the overlays tab, click the drop down, and I'm gonna select wireframe and that will let me see my wireframe uh, in all the different modes. I'm also gonna come up here to the viewport render options. I'm gonna switch to matte cap and I will grab the red matte cap and that will just give me a little bit of shine on my mesh and I can see things a little clearer. Okay, great. Now, next thing we're gonna do is we're going to drop down the array and we are going to create a circle because we're gonna move this thing around a circle or loft it around a circle. I'm gonna go shift A, actually I'll leave edit mode and shift A, curve, circle. Don't get confused and go mesh circle. We want to make sure it's a shift a curve circle. And I'm going to scale this guy right up real big, something like that. And then I'm going to select my original object and I'm going to grab the, uh, it's called the curve deform modifier. So you just start typing in curve. You're going to get it. And then it's asking us for a curve object. We will select the Bezier curve. Now you might have to switch through the different deform axes to get the right one. In my case, it's going to be negative Z. You can see here that that is bending it in the correct way. The other thing I want to do is come over to my array modifier, open this up and switch the type from fixed count to fit curve. And then I'm going to select this curve. There we go. So now we're going to get this thing going all the way around and fitting the curve. Now you might notice here, I've got a little bit of overlap and that's mostly because the shape of my mesh when multiplied this many times around doesn't quite line up perfectly. So we could fix that up by going into edit mode and oh, What's happened? Everything changed. So 
When you're working with modifiers on mesh, whenever you go into edit mode, you typically lose the visibility of what those modifiers are doing. And that can be kind of frustrating, confusing, and hard to work with. So thankfully, what we can do is come over here and turn on these values. And this is the edit mode display button. So if I turn this on, it's going to show me the effect of the curve modifier, the array modifier, and the mirror modifier while I'm in edit mode. And you can see they're kind of like an overlay because we have the original source geo right here. Now, if I was to turn on the next button up, it's actually going to take my source geo and also allow the modifiers to adjust it. And this can be useful sometimes, but in this particular case, it's going to be best if we leave that turned off. All right. So now if I take all of this and then scale on the Z and just hold down shift, you can see that I can get a point where I don't get that same overlap. And that looks a little bit better. All right, now with all these things set up the way they are, that's pretty dynamic. You can see we can click on the Bezier circle and hit S to scale, and that's going to allow us to scale up our um, circle, our tire uh, completely, which is really, really cool. Now, I need to get this whole thing turned on its side, so I'm going to grab both of these guys and hit R, X, 90, and that will bring them up. All right, I also want to take my Bezier circle and increase its resolution, because you can see we're getting a bit of a faceted result. So I'm just going to turn this right up. I'll just max it out to 64. That should be good now. I'll get nice and smooth. And now what we can do is we can go into our original plane, go into edit mode, and it might be helpful if we had two views for this. So I'm going to keep one view up here so I can really see my tire curving like this. And then I'm going to go over to the corner where I get the little plus icon and click and drag, and that's going to split my view. Just get that all lined up. Go. And now in this view, what I can do is I can zoom right in on my mesh. Now I can work on it and get the right perspective that I want. All right. Awesome. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to edge mode and I'm going to grab some of these edges and I'll grab Z and move this down. You can see how it's affecting the whole object. So I can bring this up as well. Let me bring this down a little bit, create a bit of a curve. Just like so. And I can also take this and hit E and Z. I'm going to bring this down. And then I'm going to grab X and kind of curve it in. Just go over here just to get a better angle on what, what's happening. Bring this up. And that's pretty cool. Now we've got a little bit of a lip there on our tire. All right, let's see what this looks like when we add in some smoothness. So I'm going to come over to the wrench modifier. And after all these, I'm going to add the subdivision surface modifier. Subdivision surface will smooth out all of our mesh and round out the shape. And you can see we're getting a really cool result from that. So I'm going to just shape this a little bit more, maybe thicken out the rim of this tire. Bringing that down and bringing this in. Awesome. Now let's figure out a little bit of tread on this. Now, what I want to do next is I'm going to actually hide the effect of all these things. I'm going to hit Control R to create a loop cut right down the center there. And I'm actually going to concentrate two more. I'll do that and that. And then I want to do a loop cut with control R here and another one right here. And I think that should be pretty good. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to grab the, uh, let's see, this edge here and I'll skip one and I'll come to here, hold down shift and alt and click to get that next edge. And then I'll hit G and Y to grab Y and I'll just bring it forward to create this tread like pattern. I might grab the center one as well and G and Y and bring it up as well along with those guys, that should be pretty good. And now what I wanna do is pick some of these faces. So I'm gonna to go to face selection mode and I might grab these faces right here and these faces right here. I think that'll be pretty good. And now what I want to do is I'm going to hit E to extrude, and I'm just going to move up a little bit so I get this extrusion on the tread. All right, now with all that done, let's see how it looks. We're going to come back over to the array and activate it, and then we're going to activate the curve. And already I can see we have an issue. We've got a gap. Why do we have that gap? Well, the reason is we have this array set to relative offsets. So remember how I said before, it's relative to everything else. By pushing out the tread into the zigzag pattern, it's pushed out what's relative and we get this gap here. So what I need to do to fix that is I'm gonna turn off relative offset and I'm gonna come over here and turn on constant offset. Now with constant offset, let's change that. I'm gonna zero out the X. I'll come to the Z and I'll set that to one instead. And then I'll hold down shift and I'm just gonna 
drag down a little bit to get this closer and closer and closer. And I'm looking for this gap to just close. There we go. And now the merge should take care of making that uh, fully meshed up. Awesome. Now with this bike tread, what we're going to do now is let's turn on, uh, let's see if we turn everything on. No, the subdivision surface. Let's turn that on next and have a look at how that looks. And now, as you can see, we get these little like rounded nodules, which isn't quite the look we want with those nice hard edges. So we need to go in here and add a bevel to make this work really, really well. So I'm going to hide my subdivision surface again, and I might even hide the array and the curve just to simplify things. And I'll come over here and I'm going to grab a bevel. I'll take that bevel and I will drag it right up, maybe right after the mirror here. And you can see things are looking already really messy. Uh, I'm just going to turn this down a whole lot. And I don't want to bevel everything. I actually just want to bevel the edges that I specify. So I'm going to switch this from limit method from angle to weight. And then what we can do is we can come in here and we can go to edge mode and select these specific edges just like this. I'll grab these guys as well. And then I can come in here and add my mean bevel weight and just turn it up to one. You'll see them turn blue. And what this is going to do is it's going to affect how the bevel works. So we'll get a bevel just on these bits. I'm also going to turn this down to so 0 0.001 to the amount. All right, so let's see how the subdivision surface handles that. I'm going to turn this on and you can see it starts to give us a much better result. Now let's add in a little bit more. I'm going to grab this one, just shift select and grab the bottom edges here. And I'm also going to grab these, turn that bevel weight up to one. I might add one more tread right down the middle. So I'm going to hit control R to create a loop cut, loop cut and just click right here. And then I'll go to face mode and I will just select, shift select those two faces. I'll hit E and just bring it right up a little bit. So it's a similar height to the other one. And then I'll hit control plus to expand my selection. And with that expansion of the selection, I'm going to come over here and click on the mean bevel weight and set it to one. I'm also going to select this face here and this face right here and turn their mean bevel weight up to one as well. And that should help sharpen up those edges a great deal. Okay, cool. Now we can look back and I think we've got a really cool looking tread. So let's put this in action and see what it all looks like when it's together. And there you have it, our very own bike tread. I hope you really enjoyed this tutorial. I learned some great tips about how you can use non-destructive modifiers in your modeling workflow to do some really cool stuff. And if you're interested in learning how to go even further with this and how to learn how to do this really, really well with great uh, topology and really good flow, as well as how to get um, all of this, you know, remeshed down into something that you can use in a game engine and retextured in something like Substance Painter, I really encourage you to go check out the tread course over on cgcookie.com. Thanks so much for watching. Please hit that like button and subscribe to the channel if you'd like to see more content like this leave us a comment let us know what you'd like to see in the future thanks so much for watching i will catch you in the next one until then see you later